The one other winter decorating thing that I often do some of is more of a pine swag and they look nice hanging outside. They're not going to be in water like the arrangement I showed you guys the other day with the floral foam, the moist foam. So they're going to grouse startled me when they fly by. They always kind of explode out of the bushes. Um, there's nothing keeping moisture to those branches. So if you hung this inside, it would look pretty for a couple days, but then it, with the heat indoors, it would pretty quickly get dried out and brittle and start to drop its needles. But outside, at least if you live somewhere that's cold at all, um, where it's around freezing or close to freezing or below freezing, they will last a really long time just because there's not enough heat to dry them out. Now I'm going to do two swags. I want one to hang on this side of my door and one right there. So I want them to kind of match, but when you're working with natural materials like this, um, it's rare that you get two identical ones, but I want kind of a long branch to start as my base. And mostly I'm looking up here at the tip area, what that looks like because that's the part of this you're gonna see. So those aren't exactly the same, but the tips look similar. So I'm gonna make that my two foundations for my swags. If you're doing one or putting them places where you can't see them beside each other, um, then don't worry about obviously making anything match. But I'm gonna just layer up from here several other, again, I'm using a variety of different kinds of conifers. But as I start, this is my long tip. I'm not gonna put anything down over it or anything like that. I'm gonna come up from that. So the tips of my next one are gonna not quite go down to the bottom of the first one. I'm try to find a similar branch for my other guy. Hopefully this just gives you guys some ideas of something that's fun and pretty and inexpensive that you can do if you like decorating either for Christmas or for just winter in general. Now this would work, but this guy's branch is too short. I, I need everything, all the branches to come up here to where my hand is because that's where we're gonna anchor this eventually. So I can't use that guy because he's not gonna reach the anchor and he would just fall out, which is not helpful. So I'm gonna pick that guy because he's longer. And I'm gonna continue trying to find similar uh, branches for each of my swags here. This guy's got some real bushy ones on the bottom, so I'm just gonna clip them off because I'll probably reuse them for something shorter, but I want that long part. Well, even he's not quite long enough. When you go out to collect pine, if you're doing your own, cut all the branches just as long as you can because you can always make them shorter, but you can't ever make them longer again. There we go, he's long enough. And now he's got kind of a curve going that way. So as I go on up here and kind of keep building this out, I'm gonna find one like this. That's got a curve kind of going the other way. So that's some launch pole pine. Let's get some more other varieties in here. Again, as I come, each tip is layering back from the one before it, not going out over it. So you can see all the pretty little ends. When you're working on something like this, there's a very good chance of getting pine sap on your clothes. You could do this indoors, but it's kind of messy, which is why I choose to not. And I do advise wearing something that you don't mind getting sap on because that is certainly prone to happening. Just continuing to layer my different varieties up through there. And I think that, that looks pretty good. If you're looking at it like that, it looks somewhat symmetrical. I kind of feel like I've got a little hole under there and that's back down further. So to fix that, I'm gonna to have to get a, a long bit somewhere in my pile. Maybe this guy. And I can kind of unstack some of this and tuck a longer one down under there. I kind of like that. So that is Pretty good there. Let's check my other one. I think he looks pretty good as well. Now you could do it just like this, um, but everything's going to be fanned down and out, and I like to put a top on them. So I need something that sticks straight up while the rest of it's going down. These can be littler pieces, so it's 
best to do them um, second because you're probably going to need all the long pieces you've got for the bottom parts. But first I'm going to take the top end of my bunch here and just kind of even up some of these big sticks because some of these are bigger branches and I got to be able to get my hands around this and secure it all so I want it to be kind of even and level and not sticking out at any weird angles that are just going to get in my way. Same for this guy. Hopefully it's not getting too dark to see out here. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to take that whole bunch and because that's going to be the bottom part, I'm going to start making a top part. And for the top, you can kind of wiggle them down in like that. So I'm looking for some, again, some shorter, bushier um, bits of greens here. This can be a little challenging, hard to hang on to. If you have a higher table, you can work on it. Maybe you can do it here. Um, doing that a little bit flat, but you've got to make sure you can keep a grip there because I'll show you how we'll secure that in a minute. There's some more of my variety of greens. If you're not doing something that's super detailed, it is definitely handy to wear gloves because number one, it's cold out here, and number two, um, the pine and firs and everything can be a little bit prickly. So, I'm going to keep tucking these in. And I'm going to kind of be using them to cover up all the stub branches from the bottom part of the swag as I go. So that we aren't going to see those anymore. But if we've got just a couple left, it's okay because we're going to put a bow on this and hide them all anyway. Okay, I'm going to call that good on my top. Now I'm going to double check again, make sure everything is solid there. Got a pretty big bushy top on that one. So I've got my little bunch sticking up, my long pieces sticking down, and now I need some wire. Now I've got this green floral wire. You could use any other kind of wire, um, but being green covered makes it blend in better to the green needles. Just going to unroll a pretty good long strand of this here. You need more than you think. So we've got a pretty good long piece there. It's probably hard to see. And I'm going to put this around the same spot that I was holding with my gloves. Kind of pull my ends up evenly here. Cross them over. And pull that as tight as I can and twist it. Now you're only going to get it so tight. So I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to repeat the same thing in the back. Pull both my ends up. Yank them down tight. Twist it. Go forward again. This is why you need plenty of wire because we've got so many little um, ends of branches stuck in there. We want to make sure we've got them all captured really securely. I'm going to come and cross it. And twist it in the front again. And go in the back one more time. Now my ends are getting pretty short. I'm going to do that. I've still got a little bit of ends. I'm going to wrap them around each other like this and make a loop to actually hang this from. So I've done two things there. I've just secured all the parts of my swag together and I've made a loop I can hang from. Now this will hang right up on the porch there, on my nail. So a couple handles in the way. And once you hang it up, you can kind of adjust things as well. If you want, you think, oh, that one's sticking out kind of funny there, pull them over here, all that kind of thing. 
Now, because this is really fresh and green, if I hang it up there and don't touch it, it is going to start to curl. The ends are going to come curling down and it's going to look kind of funny. So I'm going to put my bow on here and show you guys, but then for a day or so, I'm going to actually lay it flat so that the, the branches have a little bit of time to harden in that position before they curl over. And then it'll look nice for months. Do, if you guys like, show you how to make big fluffy bows like this, because they're kind of ridiculously expensive if you buy them. But once you've got them, they're easiest to make with wired ribbon. Um, there's no reason you can't reuse them. So I did not just make this one, it's one I had from last year. And I'm just gonna fluff him back up because he gets a little squished in storage. And he's got a wire on the back as well. I'm gonna put that right smack over where we secured the entire arrangement um, together. And I'm going to twist those wires tight in the back as well. And if you got the little sharp tips, I uh, try to just stick them down into the branches there so you don't actually poke yourself. And now my bow looks crooked, but I can fortunately adjust that. Wiggle them around. And there is a finished pine swag. Looks pretty, it smells amazing. I could hang this right now, but as I said, I don't want all these branches to curl down and harden and dry into that position. So I'm gonna just lay this flat Overnight tonight, maybe I'll hang it up tomorrow, might wait a full another day to hang it up. Um, but after about two days of laying flat, it should harden up enough that when you hang it up, it doesn't start to curl down. So that's how you make a real swim simple, easy, inexpensive pine swag. Now I just gotta hurry up before it's pitch dark and finish my other matching one so it can lay down overnight as well. Hopefully that gives you guys some ideas of a easy way that you can do your own decorating for winter or Christmas or whatever holidays you like. Thanks for watching folks. If you're interested in more info on my off-grid tiny house life, check out some of my other videos here. And if you like what you're seeing, click the little picture of my house to subscribe and then hit the little bell so YouTube actually notifies you every time there's a new video available. See y'all next time.